When I say trains in Africa, what do you think of? It's probably something like this, or maybe even this. Today I'll be showing you something you probably didn't expect. Morocco's incredible super high speed Al Barakh. We'll take a look at the train's first class, checking out the exclusive lounge and all parts of the train's posh interior. Join me as we take Africa's first ever high speed train from Tangier to Casablanca. Hello and welcome back to another video and welcome to Africa. I'm here in Tangier in Morocco and I'm going to be taking my first ever ride on board an African train. I'm starting on a high, quite literally, riding on board the only high speed train here in Africa, the Al Bora. I'm travelling in first class, so let's go. Welcome to the modern Tangierville station, here in Morocco's port city on the Strait of Gibraltar. There's quite a bit to cover in here before our journey today, so let's head inside. All throughout the station, there are shops and food outlets on offer. But first, let's check out the old station building. This part of the station opened in 2003 with a classic ornate design. It somewhat resembles many historic buildings here in Morocco. It's certainly well designed though, as you'd have no idea this beautiful construction was built so recently. The old and new station halls sit beside one another, with the newer model having opened in 2018 alongside the high speed line. In here you can find a garden, as well as many facilities, including a pharmacy, a convenience store, mobile shops and tourist information. On the upper level of the station you can find the food court. Accessible by escalators, there's a good bit of choice here, including the ever ubiquitous McDonald's. But there's other options too of course. One thing not to be missed here is the balcony. I've come at the right time too, with the stunning Al Barakh train arriving in the platform from Casablanca. I cannot wait to take a ride on this train. My train today will be number 2033, the 1400 Al Barakh service to Casa Voyageur. Curiously, the train is also listed as various other numbers and destinations, indicating a change of trains, but this is just confusing in my opinion. One benefit of travelling first class on the Al Barakh is access to the lounge. With a complimentary hot drinks machine as well as a well stocked fridge. A nice bonus in this weather. The lounge features plenty of room for all departing passengers with comfy sofas and ergonomic chairs. There's also free Wi-Fi and a great view of the platforms from the upper level. About 20 minutes before departure, boarding is called, so I make my way down to the platform. First class passengers board through a dedicated area, which avoids the crowds and scuffles to board the train first, as is the case in second class. Now if this train looks familiar to you, then it probably is. The Al Barakh fleet is based on the French TGV duplex, with only minor modifications to cope with the intense conditions here. The train consists of eight double-deck carriages betwixt two dedicated power cars. The Al Barakh gets its name from Islamic tradition, with the Burakh said to be a heavenly beast that transported prophets at lightning fast speeds. It's certainly a fitting choice, as this train is the fastest in Africa and one of the fastest in the world. And thanks to its speed, you can clearly see that this train is very popular with passengers. So much so, in fact, that this train is actually formed of two Al Barakh sets coupled together. The service is operated by ONCF. Standing for Office National des Chemins de Fer, this is the national operator of all trains in Morocco. It's time to get on board. Boarding is done through the lower deck. There's some seating found here too, but my seat is upstairs. First class is in a regular 2 plus 1 layout. Its overall design is identical to a French DGV. We'll have a proper look around the interior a little later on. I'm sitting in coach 12, seat 123. I think this is the window seat, but it's not clear. Today's route is fairly simple. We'll take the high speed line south as far as Kenitra before joining the classic main line to run southwest along the Atlantic coast to Casablanca. The trip is scheduled to take 2 hours and 10 minutes to cover 322 kilometers or about 200 miles. Departure on today's high speed journey is on time at 1400. 
Just after departure, we can see the depot for the Alberach fleet. Despite the service being hourly throughout almost the entire day, many of the 12 trains are spare. But there is much expansion planned for Morocco's high-speed network in the future. Heading into the outskirts of the city, we begin to gather speed, with today's impressive high-speed line starting just a short distance outside of the station. Minutes later, we're running through the hills in Morocco's north. Morocco has a mountainous landscape in much of its territory, but the railway network generally doesn't go near them. But that doesn't mean there's not plenty to see on today's trip. It's not long before we're nearing our top speed. Currently, we're going 300 km an hour. There's a lot of agricultural potential in Morocco, thanks to its varied geography. Morocco is one of the world's largest exporters of olives and tangerines, with many other fruits and veg also grown here. Anyway, let's take a look at the seats here in first class. Personally, I love the design, which resembles an Islamic gire pattern, with a rich feeling red colour. As for comfort, the seat is great, with so much padding making it more than adequate. Every seat has a pair of chunky folding armrests, which are well padded. On one of these, you can find the controls for the seat's automatic recline feature. There's fairly decent legroom here in first class, and definitely enough room for a short two-hour journey like this one. You can also find a folding footrest, which makes the seat even more comfortable. And between seat backs, there's a small bin. The seat in front has a deployable table. This is very large, good for getting some work done, and even has a drinks holder. Above this, you can find a storage net for your smaller personal items, cleverly placed to keep them in your sight. For small pieces of luggage, there's an overhead luggage rack, but be warned this has very limited space. There are also luggage stacks dotted throughout the carriage. Finally, all seats have their own European-style power socket, either between the seats or on the wall. Our journey is progressing nicely, with the train running at or around 320 km an hour for most of the trip. One thing I always love doing back on European high-speed trains is watching as we overtake cars, though personally, I can't see why you'd want to drive when this train runs right next door. As I mentioned earlier, the entire journey today closely follows Morocco's western coastline. The Atlantic Ocean is even less than a kilometre away at some points, so sit on the west side of the train for a coastal view. After about 45 minutes of speeding through Africa, we now join the classic mainline. The tracks beneath us lead to Fez, the cultural capital of Morocco. We're now in the city of Kenitra, one of the major population centres in the country. You can already see the difference between the new high-speed line and the older classic routes. Now I'm sure I don't need to remind you that Morocco's railways have received a big upgrade in recent years, but one thing I do like is that they preserve the old infrastructure too. Kenitra station has the old buildings still in place. It's quite the contrast, I'm sure you'll agree. Departure from Kenitra indicates that our top speed has halved, from 320 km an hour to 160 km an hour. Whilst the journey is of course slower, it does let us get a better look at the scenery passing by. As these tracks are shared with regular trains, we pass through a lot of local stations, such as Sidi Taibi. About 20 minutes later, we're on the approach to Rabat. 
At this point, an impressively tall structure comes into view. This is the Muhammad VI Tower, currently under construction. Once finished, this multi-purpose skyscraper will be the tallest in Morocco and the second tallest in all of Africa, its 55 floors reaching 250 metres of height. We're now approaching Rabat Agdal. Rabat is actually Morocco's capital city, established as such in 1955 when the country achieved independence from France. After departing Rabat, it's non-stop to Casablanca. But for now, let's take a look around the rest of the train. The Al Barakh trains have two first-class carriages, with five second-class carriages too. These are of a similar design, of course in a less spacious 2 plus 2 seating layout instead. In the middle of the train you can find the buffet car. This features some drinks and a bunch of local cuisine, and best of all, the menu is even in English. Sadly though, I was unable to try anything, as the buffet car is cash only. If you've tried the food on the train, let me know in the comments what you thought of it. Now on to the toilets. There are two per carriage, one on the upper deck and one down below. Even by train standards, these are fairly cramped, but everything was in good condition. The soap dispenser was working fine, as was the water tap. And a hand dryer was provided too. As we close in on Casablanca, it's time to look at how much this journey cost. For this trip, I bought a flexible first class ticket, which cost me 437 Moroccan dirhams. For a flexible ticket on a high speed train, I think this is great value for money. But it's worth mentioning that if you book a non-flexible ticket, then you can pay less than a third of this, with second class getting even cheaper still. Just a few minutes away from the journey's end today, we pass by one more city. This is Mohamedia, named after King Mohammed V, who negotiated Morocco's independence. The city nowadays is a port and the centre of the country's petroleum industry. Overall, I think this was a fantastic journey, and certainly not something I was expecting when first researching Morocco's rail network. We even arrive into Casa Voyageur, the main station in Casablanca, two minutes early at 16.08. I'm really impressed by the Al Barakh, with its comfy seats, record speeds for Africa and a decent lounge, all at an attractive price. But for another high speed train that surprised me, then you'll want to see my amazing ride on the luxurious Turkish Valaro. Click up here now to continue the journey.